Hello Hammerheads! Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. And this is for that sad fucking troll out there. You know, with a thousand accounts who's been fucking around with everyone. And keeps getting, time and time again, owned by the mayor. <laughs> And, um, however, I have deduced that it's somebody close to home. It's definitely one of my Facebook friends. I know that for a fact. <sighs> anyway, fuck that. It's not what this video's about, fucking trolls. Fuck that shit. What the fuck's this, anyway? Double Dutch, right? Um, let's see where it's brewed. Um, brewed and canned in the EU. So, it <laughs> doesn't fucking tell you. Brilliant. But brewed in fucking Stoke-on-Trent or somewhere, you know what I mean? Fucking hell. Gone are the days when we used to get lovely fucking, you know, you, you imported beer. Yeah, you get some, but it's fucking, it's all but dissipated, doesn't it, over the last 20, 25 years or so. Now it's all brewed in England. Everyone's going around buying fucking Fosters. Why? Nobody drinks that shit in Australia. Fucking Fosters. My sister went to Australia for two weeks, right? And she was showing off, trying to show off in the bars and that. Drinking fucking Fosters to impress the locals. And they just looked at it. You know, and some of them come over and says, Why are you drinking that fucking shit? Because Australians don't drink it. It's a very... Shit, fuck, it's the shittest beer in Australia, apparently. And so is Forex from fucking, well, I think the brewery of Forex is, um Queensland. Well, VB Ed hates Queensland. <laughs> I think I've, a lot of us have gathered that by now. And I mistakenly thought Cheeky Chickenhead was from there, because she mentions it in a few vid videos and that. And anyway, fucking hell. Tangents galore, man. I'm here to talk about... Fuck. Oh, God. Bands reforming. It's a joke. It's, you know... What's going on? I just found out today that... Um, Midnight Oil Australian band from the 70s a reforming. And I didn't even know that split up. Very good band actually, Midnight Oil. I mean they were they were bigger in Australia than they were in England because over here, you know, we had this big fucking hit. Um Midnight but um you know, it's fucking what the hell was it called again? That's the only song everyone fucking talks about. Ooh, one hit wonder. No, fuck off. My brother was well into them and he had loads of albums by them dating back to 1977. And everyone thought they were a new band in England because, you know, obviously they're Australian. They had a hit over here. They probably had more hits over there. It's like Sherbet had a big hit in England, you know, and in... in the summer of 1976 with fucking, um, how was that? But these bands getting back together again, reforming. Why? I'll tell you fucking why. Because they're all out of work, they're all skint, all the solo projects have dried up, that's why. The same with fucking Deep Purple, right? You know, they split up in... 1976, right? You know, Tommy Bolin was... Well, this was after fucking... Before he died, anyhow. 
fucking Tommy Bull and went on to make a few solo albums after he left Deep Purple. He was only one on one Deep Purple album, Tommy Bull and the guitarist. Replaced Richie Blackmore and although good, but Come Taste the Band, 1975, was really... I mean, don't get me wrong, I love that album. But it doesn't sound anything like Deep Purple. Because <laughs> Richie Blackmore's not on it. You change a fucking musician in a band, especially an important one like the guitarist, you're going to notice the mega, mega, mega change, aren't you? Now, he was a massive difference. I mean, you know, fucking Tommy Bolin was, you know, the, he was American. We got him from the States and that, and, you know, he's in it was heroin and all that, and that's how he died after a couple of solo albums when Deep Purple disbanded in 1976. And he all ventured on fucking solo projects. You know, it, well, you know, did David Co not solo ones like for David Coverdale because he formed White Snake in 1977, um, and two other Deep Purple members were in that band up until 1980 fucking one or something. John Lord on keyboards and Ian Pace on drums. And then, fucking, you know, obviously Ian Gillen was, he fucking left Deep Purple and tried to manufacture all these British motor, well, you know, he opened up loads of British motorcycle fucking shops in the <laughs> mid-70s, bad time, all went bust, just like the British car industry, British Leyland and all the rest of that fucking shit. And, um so he was out of a job and all and what happens Deep Purple reform in 1984 like Mark II Deep Purple you know Blackmore, Gillen, Glover Lord and Peace and why well I'll tell you why because Rainbow had just split up in 1984 83, back end of 83. White Snake, well, Ian Pace had left them a few years early, a couple of years earlier. He was in, you know, other projects like Gary Moore stuff and fucking Graham Bonnet stuff and that. And so he was out of work. He was just, he, he was in danger of becoming a session drummer, Ian Pace. And he had fucking, you know, the Rainbow had just split up as well. Sorry, Gillen had just split up. So, Gillen, what am I going to do now? Uh, that's me solo project finished. So, he had all these, like, Mark II, Deep Purple ex members fucking out of work and probably not skint, but they wanted to do something. All the solo projects and all the fucking bands had failed. So now it was like, I know, let's do. So they made two albums with that lineup. 84 and the other one was 87, I think, and. No both fucking shit. Yeah, a couple of good things about them, but. I mean, you had Perfect Strangers 1984 and you had fucking House of the Blue Light 87. And why did they do them albums? Why did they reform? Because they were out of work. You know, <laughs> to, to me, right? To me, Deep Purple was... Over and done with in 1976 when they split up. That was it. End of them. That was the end of that band, right? Finish. The split and that was it. You cannot reform and be the fucking same, man. The, all the authenticity is gone. Everything. All of it. You cannot reform and... You know, try and make it again. You know, you're all living in the fucking past. 
try and re trying to regain your youth and that. I don't know what it is. Fucking hell, man. I mean, I, I loved Gillen, you know. Didn't like the Ian Gillen band much. But Gillen, in, in 1979, Mr. Universe, that's when they become a proper fucking... They slotted in very nicely with the new Wobbum period. Yeah, new wave of British heavy metal. And I didn't coin that phrase. Fucking Mick Wall or somebody, one of the writers for fucking Sounds, Paper and Kerrang. And one of them fucking idiots. New wave of British heavy metal. And anyway, Spooky Tooth have done it. Um, but I didn't know that until Dibber mentioned it. He mentioned it a while back. You know, one of my Sunday song recommendations. Or it might have been on my Dave the Donkey channel, I can't remember. But all these bands get about Take that! There's another example. Ooh, what we're doing now? Gary Barlow was shit. He got accused of... Well, he got found out of lip-syncing all the fucking time. Using modifications to make his voice sound good and all this fucking shit. You know, he, he was rubbish. Fucking who was the evil one? Uh, Mark Owen. He was rubbish and all. He, he fucking... He, same thing happened to him. The only one who made it out of them was Robbie Williams. I don't like him personally, but, you know, he, he did well for himself. The rest of them were fucking shit. At least Robbie Williams went in a sort of semi-rock direction, you know what I mean? But getting back together again? Come on! It's, it's done with. A band splits up. They all split up for a fucking reason. It's like when marriages break down, man. Yeah, I know there's some people who's remarried and renewed the marriage vows. What fucking good's that gonna do? It's a piece of fucking paper, you fucking dickheads. Once a band has split up, that is it. They're gone. F fucking gone. I mean, I went to see fucking Caravan and at the Sage, right, in January 2000 and fucking 11, I think it was. No, fucking hell. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Um, was it 2013? It must have been. And, um... Guess how many original members were in that band when I went to see them? One. And that was Pi Hastings. Obviously it was his caravan, his, his band. There was a bloke there that's been there since about fucking 71 or something. I can't remember his name. You know, he plays the flute, the sax, the, all sorts of things. And, you know, he's been there in the band for that long, but he's still not an original member. And it's like, you know, people go about, see, um, the Australian Pink Floyd. I mean, there's a lot of Pink Floyd rip-offs, isn't there? A lot of them. I wouldn't fucking bother, because if it's not the real thing, it's not fucking them, is it? But then again, you could say the same thing about classical music. I mean, Beethoven died a very long time ago. So did Tchaikovsky and all the rest of them. You know? People still do their music. But it's not the same. We're talking about fucking rock music here. You're going to get people who don't sound anything like them. You're going to get fucking guitarists. like... <laughs> Big difference. Classical music, I mean, you know, you can play it and everyone's got to be in sync. It's got to be perfect. You know, rock music on the other hand, it, apart from, you know, 
the real roots of it and the, the original bands and all that. But the covers and that, they're going to be fucking, you know, they're going to be erratic and different. You know, like classical music. That's all going to be exactly the fucking same. And you get fucking the London Philharmonic Film Orchestra. They're, they're, they're boring. They're not as good as um, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Because Deep Purple played with them in 1969. The very first Deep Purple album to feature Ian Gillan and Roger Glover. And, um, yeah, it was like, yeah, playing with a Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. I've got the album on vinyl somewhere in there. I'm fucking not going to look for it. This video will go on for two days if I did that. But, um, you know, the, the four, it was quite successful, but it wasn't really, it wasn't a breakthrough or anything. And, and the previous albums before that, you know, they had like three albums before that, and they weren't really a big breakthrough for Deep Purple. So they released this with the orchestra and all that, and and do you know that, that everyone in the band, apart from Richie Blackmore, wanted them to go in in um, a classical direction. Richie Blackmore was having none of that. No, no, no. So they all had a big debate, you know. There must have been a, a democracy. And um, they took a vote and he says, Right then, let's do our next album, a rock album, and see what happens. Right? And, the, and so, fair enough. And then what was released in 1970, Deep Purple and Rock. One of the biggest selling rock albums of all time. So they never looked back after that. Fucking, can you imagine now if, if, if Richie Blackmore didn't speak up and Deep Purple wouldn't have been born, really. <laughs> well, they would have, but they would have died at a very early age, you know what I mean? Bands getting back together, it's it's a sorry state of affairs. It's just another one of them, you know, one of them pointers to tell you that how bad the music industry is nowadays. People just have to still be noticed when they're in the fucking 70s and all that, you know what I mean? Oh, I was in this band in the 60s. Yeah, you know, it's a job to them, isn't it? At the end of the day, you know, yeah. it's quite sad, really. But I don't like—I don't bother with these fucking bands anymore. I mean, fucking Black Sabbath, for instance. Unless it was them for, or you know, D. Obviously, Dio can't. He died, didn't he, a few years ago? So leaves him out, but. It was the the usual Fab Four of Black Sabbath between sixty eight and seventy eight. The ten years they were all together. I'm not interested. Well, yeah, I love Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules from nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty one with Ronnie James Dio on vocals, but after that. Fucking Glenn, Ian Gillan and then Glenn Hughes. Two X Deep Purple fucking singers singing in Black Sabbath. Come on. It's a fucking joke. I thought it was a joke when I seen that in Kerrang! in 1986. The new Black Sabbath album. Glenn Hughes on vocals. Seventh star. I'm thinking, what? I haven't even heard that album. I don't want to fucking hear it. Glenn Hughes does not belong in Black Sabbath. <laughs> Needless to say, that's the only album he appeared on. Fucking, he's a funk singer. You know, Black Sabbath for a, a downbeat, depressing band singing about real life issues. And Glenn Hughes is fucking the vocalist. Come on. Doesn't, no, nah. So I never even give that album a listen because I remember listening to the the Gillen one. Fucking born again. It's terrible. It's not even Black Sabbath. 
It's not even Black fucking Sabbath, that album. Born Again, it's like, what is this? What is Ian Gillan doing in Black Sabbath? Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's getting as bad as football now. All these bands jumping in each other's fucking groups and that. All these members jumping in each other's fucking... Ugh. Sorry about that, I'm getting a bit worse for wear at the minute. Yeah, I'm going, I've had enough of this. Fuck that, see you later.